and time myself, 15 minutes. All right, um, um, so a couple months ago, Rias talked about how pervasive JavaScript is. Um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to do the prequel to that. Um, sort of explore a little bit um, how we got to this point. Um, let's see. For, for, for the old timers, this would be like traveling back in time. Um, for the youngsters, this will be an actual lesson. Uh, so the 90s, it all starts in the 90s. Um, and if you are one of my students, any of my students here? Come on. Okay. <laughs> then, then you know I'm obsessed about the 90s. So in the 90s, I was in college. Um, uh, this guy invented the internet. And um, when I was in college, I remember uh, when my roommates in, in my dorm, he showed me something he made in JavaScript. And I just scoffed at him. Um, nobody uses JavaScript. JavaScript is for weenies. We use Java. That's, that's, that's what real programmers use. He, he, he showed me some like mouse over hover effect over, and, and it swaps the image of, of the button to, to make it look like it was depressed. So um, that, that was the cool thing back then. Um, so this guy, Tim Berners-Lee, he is the inventor of the World Wide Web. And um, one of his first projects towards that was the first ever web browser. And this is what it looks like. He built it on the next operating system. How many people know about the Next operating system? Oh, pretty cool. Uh, so Next is the precursor to the OS X uh, system that you use on Macs today. Um, there, there's a really interesting story behind that, um, how Steve Jobs got ousted out of his own company and all that. You should read about it. Um, I'm not, <laughs> I don't have time to go into it, though. Um, so. Um, the browser wars, uh, even before the browser wars that we know it, I, I feel like there's like sort of three phases to the browser wars. I'm going to talk about the very first one. It took place around 1993. It's the Mosaic Wars, even before Netscape and IE and all that. Um, so, because so, some browsers were actually text-based. I used to use this in college with Telnet into the system, this Unix system uh, in the university from our dorm room. And this is how we browse the web. Uh, but but uh, links, this is called links. You can still use this. You can like boo install links and it works. It's cool. You should try it. Um, this is the first graphical uh, web browser. It's called Mosaic. Um, it was the first champion. It's the first winner, undisputed, undisputed champion of browsers. And then came Netscape. Netscape was basically a fork of Mosaic. Um, and Netscape exploded for a while. Um, and uh, if, if you imagine that you are the people working at Netscape, and this was the year 1995, you're thinking, this is amazing. Right, <laughs> like we're gonna, like, just within one year, we got from zero percent market share to seventy percent market share. We're gonna dominate the world. We're selling this browser on a CD at thirty bucks a pop. We're gonna be rich. Like, so <laughs> they take mail-in orders <laughs> to send out the CD to you at home. Um, it's gonna be amazing. And uh, that co that happens also to coincide with the dot com bubble. That's cool. Um, Microsoft came along, and they saw this happen. They said, "That's not okay. We gotta do something about that." So they used their uh, their 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 famous uh, what is it called this strategy. Uh, uh, Em embrace and extend strategy. Thank you. <laughs> I lost it for a moment. Embrace and extend. They'll, they'll reverse engineer the product, and they'll make it better. And then people are stuck with it. Um, 
and that that did actually work. Um, and then there's the third character in the story is Sun Microsystems. Uh, you might know them as the people who created Java. Um, and actually, the, the main product that they were selling was actually Sun OS, which is a Unix operating system. Um, they also made Java, um, but they were not really making, not planning to make money with Java. The, the, the idea was, since, since Microsoft was winning the war on operating systems, they're going to sort of nullify the operating system and make a programming language that can run on any operating system. Um, so that was their big thing. You write Java once, it can run anywhere. And even in a browser. What if you can make Java run in a browser? Then anyone in the world that has a browser can run Java. So that was the idea. You don't need Windows to run your software anymore. All you need is Java. And because Microsoft was clearly the gorilla, um, or the Goliath <laughs> to the David. Um, these two little guys, Netscape, Netscape was the sort of up and coming rising star, and Sun Microsystem was sort of the laggard. They decided to team up each other against Microsoft. They're, they're the, this, Microsoft is this evil empire. We have to stick together to fight them. Um, so they, they create, formed an alliance. Um, and as, a, as part of that alliance, they decided, we're going to put Java inside of Netscape, the web browser. The web browser that everybody's going to be using, we're already at 70% market share. It's going to be 100% pretty soon. We're going to put Java in there. Everybody's going to be using Java. We don't have to worry about Microsoft anymore. That was applets. Great story. <laughs> Clearly, the applets was a big success. Success there, but there's a little bit of a complication because Netscape already were planning on creating their own programming language for the browser. It's called LiveScript. Um, and so before they had this, came up with this idea of this alliance. They, they said, I, "We want to put this thing called LiveScript and put it in Netscape." Um, so now it becomes. LiveScript versus Java. Which one are you going to put in the browser? Um, there was a lot of uneasiness, a lot of confrontation there. Um, and one flash of genius by this man. Who's this man? Mark Andreessen. Yeah, that, that's not a costume, by the way. Um, <laughs> uh, but uh, one flash of genius from Mark and Dreesen, he said, I know how to solve this problem. We will call it JavaScript. Uh, we, they, they renamed LiveScript to JavaScript, and it became a co-branding thing. There's the Java, and there's Java's little brother, JavaScript. So that, that's, that's, that's why we have JavaScript today. Um, but JavaScript, as most of you know, JavaScript is not Java. You're not interoperable. You're not related even remotely. Um, but they, they, they all share the same prefix of Java. Um, and also, as part of that agreement, Sun Microsoft Systems owns the trademark of JavaScript. So that's interesting. Who owns the Who owns JavaScript now? Oracle. Oracle bought Sun, so. Now Oracle owns the trademark of JavaScript. Um, okay, JavaScript, 1995. Uh, the first j version of JavaScript appeared. Sort of second version of JavaScript <laughs> did appear 1996, uh, but not really. So Microsoft said, "Oh, JavaScript is this is a problem. We have to embrace and extend this thing." So Microsoft made JScript, not JavaScript, JScript. Uh, looks suspiciously like JavaScript. Uh, and, and JScript is running on IE now. Um, uh, and uh, as you know, IE took off once 
it was installed on Windows by default, and uh, because of that was history. Um, Netscape, but but when when Microsoft did this, Netscape got really spooked, and they said they we can't let them do this embrace and extend thing to us, just like they did to all the other software companies. There's been a lot of like VisiCalc was <laughs> VisiCalc was was uh, overrun by Excel, and then well, what what was the thing that preceded? Microsoft Word, Word per Word Perfect, yeah. So, yeah. Before Word, there's Word Perfect. Before Excel, there was VC Cal Lotus, Lotus one, two, one, two, three. And then, and then the email thing before Outlook, there was the um, uh, I forgot. That yeah, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, so Microsoft took all of that. Uh, Net Netscape said. I'm not having that. I'm gonna make JavaScript a standard. Um, they, for some reason, everybody hated Netscape in the United States. Um, <laughs> they were they were like this rat, and and so the only thing they could do is find someone in Europe to standardize JavaScript for them. So that was the ICMA committee, and they found someone to do that for them in '97. Uh, since then, we had several ECMAScript versions. Uh, ECMAScript 6 is the one that you're hearing a lot about today, although it also recently the version scheme changed and it's supposed to be ES 2015 now. Uh, that was like by far the uh, biggest upgrade to the language. Um, Yeah, so after after Net after IE took off, uh, Netscape kind of died a pretty rapid death. However, JavaScript lives on, and that was largely because of the standard of JavaScript. The, the fact that JavaScript, it is at least possible, although very painful, is at least possible to write uh, JavaScript that worked on multiple browsers. Um, when Netscape died, uh, the Mozilla Foundation came about and continued that work. Uh, they rebranded to Firefox. Uh, 2005 is what I call the rebirth of JavaScript. Uh, that was the start of Gmail, Google Maps, Ajax. Ruby on Rails is something that propelled JavaScript in that it bundled a fancy JavaScript library out of the box. And that was prototyped and scriptaculous. Um, a lot of people made use of that to make very simple, easy, but very cool effects uh, with their web application, something that traditionally traditional web applications did not have. We also got the Firebug. Today you use Chrome DevTools. Back, back in the day, everyone used Firebug. Um, then 2006, we got jQuery, which really changed the game again. HTML5, that started 2008, and Google Chrome was a big deal. Google Chrome was a brand new JavaScript engine created by Matt Genius, like programming language in, uh, implement, implementer that who used to work on Java and Smalltalk. Uh, like he, he knows how to make a programming language fast. Um, let's see. 2009 was, was sort of like a, um, was like a point where JavaScript got so big due to all this new innovation that I just talked about that somebody decided we need a conference just about JavaScript. And then after that, or at that conference, was when Node.js was first introduced. Like, it was sort of like all this, all of this, all of this stuff that was just waiting 
to to be shown to the world, and Node.js was that. It, it was it was, well, it was it was the first JavaScript conference that launched Node.js, and it just took off because of various reasons. Two thousand ten, Flash died, <laughs> and then after that, basically it was basically Steve Jobs just came out and said, "We made this thing." Is not gonna have Flash on it, and the second day, all the Flash developers switched to JavaScript. That's what happened. So after that, it was all JavaScript. We have tons more innovations with JavaScript. Um, that's pretty much what led to Rias' uh, presentation <laughs> a few months ago. My time is up. Any questions? Okay, all right, Mitch, are you ready? <laughs>